you know, when it all happened, I was, I was filming away. So, you know, there was, you know, I'm like the rock of the family, you know, when it, especially when it comes to, you know, times where it's like family is really needed, you know, and now I think I'm back. I don't mean to be the super big brother dad, but this is, this is, this is nuts. I, I might, I might record the whole ride. I might run out of storage. Oh, you need that. What'd you forget? And what do you need to drive? <laughs> I'm like the proud mother. Yes, do you see my smile? Jeez. Yes, we see that beautiful smile. Model Kim Porter stepped out in Los Angeles on Monday night to support her son, Quincy Brown, who was the star of Jamal Hill's new film, Brotherly Love. So, it looks like Quincy Brown, Kim Porter's son with Al B. Shore, is making some major moves behind the scenes to protect his younger sisters, Jesse and Delilah, amid Diddy's ongoing legal troubles. And rumor has it that Quincy's been quietly working with authorities, shedding light on what really went down in that household. You see, Diddy liked to play the father figure to Quincy without actually actually making it official through adoption. Allegedly, he even used Quincy as a pawn to get revenge on Kim's ex, I'll be sure. And if that wasn't enough drama, Jaguar Wright recently threw some serious accusations into the mix, suggesting that Diddy would regularly threaten I'll be sure by using Quincy as leverage. Who's standing? And now I'll be sure is now, he's being cryptic, not too cryptic, but He's now... He's very cryptic. He's very cryptic, but... But he's speaking, he's speaking louder than he's ever spoken before. Ever. And the reason why he's cryptic is for the sake of his son. Mm. Imagine having an enemy that has a position of influence in your child's life and knowing that that person sends you notes and messages every now and then, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, that boy is... Now, after the recent raids on Diddy's properties, Al B. Shore publicly spoke out, urging Quincy to come back home. And while Diddy has reportedly used every trick in the book to sway Quincy's allegiance, it seems Quincy's loyalty has always leaned towards his biological roots. However, it hasn't been easy to navigate this situation, especially because he felt responsible for his sisters after their mother died. Now here's the latest buzz. There's talk swirling around that Quincy might be in witness protection and he's allegedly lending a helping hand to investigators digging into the suspicious circumstances surrounding Kim Porter's untimely death. And Quincy's missing. Quincy's missing. Oh. And lastly. After he was questioned by the feds. After. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in witness protection right now. For years, whispers have circulated suggesting that Diddy had a hand in Kim's demise. The speculation goes that Kim held too many of his skeletons in her closet and was gearing up to spill all the tea in a tell-all book. Al B. sure even went so far as to label Kim's passing as murder on social media right before he himself was struck down by a mysterious illness and spent months in a coma fighting for his life. Now Quincy has always kept silent on these rumors about his mom's passing, but word on the street is that he bided his time, knowing he couldn't publicly go against Diddy until until the moment was right. Well, it seems like that moment may have finally arrived, with Quincy potentially stepping into the spotlight as the key witness against Diddy. But did Quincy ever drop any hints suggesting Diddy's involvement in his mom's death? And could this be the breakthrough that finally brings justice for Kim Porter? Let's break it all down. When your mom passed, how did that affect you, man? And were you ever able to get over that? Or how do you even move on after something like that happens? You don't. Okay. You don't, you don't move on. It still hurt. It still is like a constant learning process on like how to deal with it, mm -hmm. you know, but. So I'm sure you've all seen the dramatic footage of Diddy's mansions getting raided and his sons Christian and Justin getting cuffed by the feds while Diddy himself was nowhere in sight. But here's the kicker. Rumors are swirling that Diddy had prior knowledge of the raid and left his sons to face the cameras while he allegedly attempted to make a quick getaway only to be intercepted by the feds at a Miami airport. But hold on a second. What about Quincy Brown, the young man Diddy always claimed as his own? Where was he during all this chaos? Well, word on the street is that Quincy was already in cahoots with the feds before Diddy got with of the raid. He allegedly made sure to keep a low profile and whisk his two younger sisters, Jesse and Delilah, out of harm's way before the feds swooped in. Now, before we dive deep into Quincy's alleged plan to help the feds bring Diddy down, let's rewind a bit and fill you in on the backstory on how Quincy ended up under Diddy's wing instead of with his biological father, Al B. Shore. Quincy's late mom, Kimberly Porter, was born on December 15, 1970 in Colmubus, Georgia, and after graduating high school,
high school, she moved to Atlanta to fulfill her dreams of becoming an actress and model. Kim quickly caught the attention of modeling agencies and started working as a commercial model and appeared in several music videos like Heavy D and the Boys, Nothing But Love, and Big Daddy Kane's Smooth Operator. Around this time, Kim met the Uptown Records founder Andre Harrell and he offered her a job as a receptionist at Uptown. And this is when Kim crossed paths with singer-songwriter Al B. Shore. Al B. kicked off his music career singing background vocals on Heavy D and the Boys songs, thanks to his childhood friendship with the group member Edward Eddie F. Farrell. That connection paved the way for Al B. to cross paths with Andre Harrell, and Andre welcomed Al B. Shore into the family at his brand new label, Uptown Records. Anyway, Al B. and Kim Porter instantly clicked and started dating shortly after. Al was head over heels for Kim, and he helped her move to New York to pursue her modeling career. In 1991, Kim gave birth to Al's son, Quincy, and that same year, Al wrote the timeless Jodeci hit, Forever My Lady, in honor of Kim and their son. Kim also supported Al's music career during his peak, and Al always claimed that Kim was the love of his life. Yeah, his mom was you know, my first love right? You know, when I brought her here from Columbus, Georgia to New York, and uh, we made an amazing, amazing young man. Kim and Al were madly in love, and they actually tied the knot in secret before Quincy was born. Numbers and likes, that's not what I do. But what's funny, I posted something the other day. Yeah. Talking about my ex-wife. Yeah, I said it, my ex-wife. Kimberly. Kim nobody, but nobody knew, because we didn't discuss it being married we didn't we didn't we didn't discuss it but i was just giving her her you know like every every so often i you know i just i give a, 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 a you know just a, a tribute Sadly, Kim and Albie's fairy tale came crashing down when Kim had the misfortune of meeting Diddy. Diddy was working as an A&R executive at Uptown Records when Andre Harrell hired Kim as a receptionist, and Diddy became completely obsessed with Kim. Diddy told Essence in 2006 that the first time he saw Kim was at the studio with Albie Shore. However, Diddy claimed he didn't start making moves on Kim right away. Diddy said, I wasn't trying to holler at her or anything, but I was admiring her, her lips, her eyes, her mouth, her shape, her energy, and thinking, I wish I had a girl like that. Basically, Diddy was insanely jealous of Al B. Sure having someone like Kim on his arm and you already know Diddy has never been told no in his life so he allegedly started scheming and plotting on how to take Kim from Al B. And even before Diddy saw Kim with Al B there was a lot of talk about Diddy being jealous of Al B's musical talent. Al B had written and produced some certified classics for the likes of Jodeci, Tevin Campbell, and of course himself. Diddy on the other hand took credit for a lot of songs he neither wrote nor produced and he was always jealous of Al B and there were even stories of Diddy blocking opportunities for Al, especially in New York. So when Diddy saw that on top of being a more talented musician than himself, Al B also had a dream girl. He just couldn't help himself and pulled out all the stops to get between Al and Kim. Kim kept turning down Diddy's advances, but he was relentless, so she finally decided to give him a chance. By this point, Kim and Al had already separated, and in 1994, Kim and Diddy went public with their romance. Now keep in mind that while Diddy was busy wooing Kim and making all sorts of promises to her, he wasn't exactly waiting on the sidelines. In fact, right in the midst of all that, he ended up having a son, Justin, with Kim's friend Misa Hilton. But Kim still decided to give Diddy a shot, and in 1997, she became pregnant with their son Christian. It should have been the happiest time for Kim, but instead, she found out that Diddy was cheating on her while she was pregnant with none other than Jennifer Lopez. Oh, and he didn't stop at J-Lo. According to Gene Deal, Diddy also used to sneak around with other men. He was with every chick, every dude, whoever he wanted to be with, you know, when Kim was alive. Uh, praying with them, doing whatever he had to do. This marked the beginning of Kim and Diddy's toxic, on-again, off-again relationship that went on for 13 years. Kim tried to leave Diddy multiple times, but he apparently made her life a living hell every time she would even think about dating someone else. In fact, there's this long-standing conspiracy that Diddy played a part in the death of music executive Shakir Stewart, who briefly dated Kim while she and Diddy were broken up. Diddy allegedly had Kim followed, and he even wiretapped her phone, so when he found out she was seeing Shakir, he hit the roof and confronted her about this. The argument escalated quickly, and Kim reported ended up with a broken nose. Most of the reports about this incident have been scrubbed from the internet, however. There's this article published back in 2005 that describes the altercation and states that Kim was left with a broken nose after the couple argued on Combs' yacht in Saint-Tropez. The article also claims that Diddy flew in a specialist plastic surgeon from Geneva after the accident, and that Kim has since claimed that she hurt her face after she banged her nose on a table. However, Kim reportedly continued seeing Shakir despite Diddy's threats, so Diddy decided to take things up a notch and went crazy on Shakir. One source told Media Takeout, Kim was seeing Shakir and Diddy found out and he went apeshit. 
He tracked Shakir down to his hotel, then Diddy went up there without security and beat him to a bloody pulp. But it gets even more disturbing from here. On November 1, 2008, Shakir was found dead at his Atlanta home with a gunshot wound. His death was ruled as self-inflicted. However, it didn't take long before rumors started flying around that Kim spilled some of Diddy's secrets to Shakir and that Diddy had a hand in orchestrating Shakir's demise. But that wasn't enough for Diddy. He also allegedly started plotting how to separate Kim's son Quincy from his father Al B. Shore because he knew Kim still loved Al and he worried they might get back together. Now Diddy often bragged about how he adopted Quincy and he tried to paint this picture of Al B. Shore as a deadbeat dad. However, according to Diddy's bodyguard Gene Deal, this was a bunch of BS because Diddy never formally adopted adopted Quincy, and as for Al B, he did everything in his power to stay in his son's life. And to his day, Quincy goes by the last name Brown, which is Al B, Sure's name. He was born Albert Joseph Brown. He had motherfuckers think that he had adopted Quincy, and he never did. Al was never out of his son's life. I knew Al way back in Mount Vernon. He used to wear leather pants and a hundred <laughs> <laughs> I knew it way back then though, man. Al a good dude. A good dude. Now, while Diddy was playing the role of father of the year in public, he was treating Kim like dirt behind the scenes, putting his hands on her, cheating on her left and right, allegedly with both women and men, and he even fathered another secret child with his longtime associate, Sarah Chapman. Sarah gave birth to Diddy's daughter, Chance Comsby, in 2006, and shortly after, Kim finally left Diddy for good. However, less than a year later, tragedy struck when news broke that Kim's lifeless body was found in her home following a short bout of pneumonia. On the the morning of November 15, 2018, Kim was discovered unconscious in her bed by a family member, and by the time the paramedics arrived, it was sadly too late and Kim was pronounced dead at just 47 years old. After the autopsy was completed, the LA County Medical Examiner Coroner concluded that Kim died from low bar pneumonia and that the manner of death was natural. However, the timeline leading to this tragedy is suspicious, to say the least. Reports surfaced that Kim started complaining of a sore throat on November 7, and by November 12, she developed a fever. However, However, she tested negative for both influenza and strep and received treatment with antibiotics, vitamins, and pain relief medication. And according to her family, by November 14th, she felt perfectly fine and her temperature was back to normal. The coroner's report also stated that Kim had no documented history of substance or alcohol use or any underlying medical conditions. In fact, she seemed to be in perfect health. I'll be sure also later confirmed this, revealing that he saw Kim shortly before her passing and she looked great and didn't complain of any health problems. But that's not all Al B said. In July, by 2020, he dropped a bombshell on social media by referring to Kim's death as murder. Al posted a throwback video of himself crying and wrote, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's murder and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. He then added, I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some BS. Really? This is where I get in trouble. We just celebrated our son Quincy's new deal and Christmas special with Netflix, and she was in fantastic health. Oh, and Al also added the hashtag, don't let the love songs fool you, seemingly alluding to Diddy's tributes to Kim. Now Al later deleted this post and claimed his son Quincy had reached out and told him the message was triggering. However, Al doubled down on his comment about Kim's passing being suspicious, and he said he stands firm in his belief that Kim's death just doesn't make sense. Meanwhile, rumors started flying around that it wasn't Quincy but Diddy who called Al B and told him to take down that post. And allegedly, Diddy threatened Al B by reminding him that Quincy lives under his roof and that something bad could happen to him at any time. However, Al refused to stay silent, and in November 2021, he posted a throwback photo with Kim and Quincy, with the caption, She sent me this saying, Life imitating art, art imitating life. Now it all makes sense. She told me other stuff too. She was running. I said, call the FBI. Al B also added in the comments, you would never believe what she went through. Now, the fact that Al B immediately told Kim to call the FBI and not the police is a huge red flag. And it sounds like whatever Kim had confided to Al about her life with Diddy, it was something huge. But get this, just months after he shared this post, Al was hospitalized after suffering a mysterious medical emergency. He later said he collapsed suddenly while working in the studio and the doctors were completely confused because they couldn't figure out how he had so many things wrong with him at the same time. Al spent two months in a coma and he later revealed 
revealed he underwent various medical procedures, including an organ transplant, multiple blood transfusions, intubation, and being placed on a ventilator. He also shared that he had accumulated excessive fluid in his lungs, fungal pneumonia, became septic, and had lymph nodes removed. Obviously, this sent shockwaves through the fan base, and fingers quickly started pointing in Diddy's direction. Fast forward a bit, and Al's been dropping these mysterious messages left and right, leaving everyone guessing and adding more fuel to the fire about Diddy's potential role in Kim's passing and his own health scare. And then after Diddy's houses were raided last month, Al B sent a public message to his son Quincy telling him to come home. Al B shared a throwback photo with Quincy and wrote in the caption, Letter to my son, come home. The door is wide open. You're safe here, son. I love you, pops. You're biological. But that's not all. Al B also recently announced he's making a documentary about his life and he said the documentary will address the mysterious circumstances that led to his coma. We're going to be producing the I'll be sure life story. So hold on to your, hold on to your bridges, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. <laughs> Now, as for Quincy, we're now hearing that he's been allegedly making quiet moves behind the scenes to get himself and his two sisters away from Diddy. He allegedly asked Kim Porter's friend Kamora Lee Simmons to take in Jesse and Delilah shortly before the feds raided Diddy's houses. And word on the street is that Quincy has already started cooperating with the feds in exchange for protection for his sisters. There are also rumors floating around that Quincy will try and get the feds to reopen Kim Porter's case because the official narrative of his mom's passing never made sense to him. Now, before all this drama with Diddy exploded with Cassie's lawsuit, Quincy played his part well, and he didn't let anyone know that he allegedly had this secret animosity towards Diddy. Every time he was asked about Diddy, Quincy would give props for giving him a good life, and this had a lot of people fooled into thinking that Diddy took Quincy under his wing out of the goodness of his heart while Al B. Shore neglected him. However, according to Jaguar Wright, neither Quincy nor Al B. had any choice but to play along with this narrative, because Diddy would allegedly send reminders to Al B that he could hurt Quincy and even have him killed whenever he wanted. However, according to Jaguar Wright, neither Quincy nor Al B had any choice but to play along with this narrative because Diddy would allegedly send reminders to Al B that he could hurt Quincy and even have him killed whenever he wanted. And Quincy's missing. Quincy's missing. Ah. Oh. And lastly. After he was questioned by the feds. After. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in witness protection right now which means his father ain't never going to see him. Have we seen the last or is this just the beginning of that saga? It's just getting started. As for fans, they're praising Quincy and saying he truly turned out to be his mother's son. A lot of folks are also speculating that Quincy only stuck around Diddy because he was scared for his sister and they're hoping this situation will lead to Kim Porter's death being reinvestigated. Quincy has good intuition. I never believed he liked Diddy just tolerated him. That young man has stuck around to protect his sisters. He's solid and played his cards right. Smart dude. Quincy, your mother would be so proud for you to step up for the girls. Be the mom they need and God bless your journey if it gets to that point. Your mother is your guiding angel. But let's hear your thoughts on Quincy and his alleged plan to bring down Diddy. Do you think Quincy only stuck around Diddy to protect his sisters? Drop your comments below and don't miss out on this next story.